for joining us today for worship here at Bethlehem Stonepile United Methodist Church, which already began outside. So thank you for joining us for that uh, wonderful time of honoring and celebrating two unsung heroes uh, from our church and from the community. Very thankful for being able to do that. I actually thought it was going to happen a little later in the service, so it kind of surprised me when it started right off. But what a beautiful way of doing that right out in the uh, open area right out front of the church. So, so very thankful to be able to honor them and be a part of that celebration. And thank you all for your prayers and joining in with that uh, as well. So, once again, welcome and thank you for being here to join in this day of lifting up our praise and worship of Jesus Christ. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Bill Jones. I am the pastor here at Bethlehem Stone Pile and very blessed to be so. I do have a couple of announcements, and if there's others, please let me know in a moment. Uh, one, um, I've been talking about this a little bit, but I want to really push this now. We're going to be offering a confirmation class this coming year. It's going to start in September and run all the way till to walking that journey with anyone that would like to join in confirmation. Uh, confirmation is the church's ability to make disciples of young people. Parents get up and they have their children baptized and they make commitments about their own faith, but confirmation is the opportunity for kids to go from being baptized Christians to proclaiming their faith. And during the whole journey, they get to ask questions, they get to dig in. Well, anything is open. We want them to be able to say yes, that they believe in Jesus Christ at the end because that is the faith that they have claimed. Um, so looking forward to this journey. All of you are going to end up being a part of it because they can't get through it without your prayers and your guidance and your wisdom as well. So this will be a whole church journey in many ways. Um, so if you are interested in being in the confirmation class this coming year, I need you to let me know. So a confirmation information sheet. Um, Teresa, do you know where those are? Where? Okay, so where the bulletins are out here in the North X, look, there's a, there's a sheet that's a confirmation information sheet. If you would like to be part of the confirmation class, please fill that out. Let me know. If you have questions and you're wondering about it, please see me. Let's get together. Let's talk. Let's pray. Uh, but... Confirmation is probably one of my favorite ministries in the church. I get really excited about it and really enjoy it. I love walking that journey with young people. Um, so I guarantee you will really appreciate and value your time in confirmation. So please let me know. All right. So also, the other thing I wanted to bring up, um, ever since I got here, we've been in the midst of covid so since getting here to the church, I've never seen ushers coming up and down and passing the plates other than when we did uh, communion the other week. I need ushers again. I need people, people that are willing to go down the line and pass plates and everything else because we're getting to the point that we'll be able to do that. But I need to have ushers in place. So if you were an usher before and want to be an usher again, awesome. We'd love to have you. Uh, if you were never an usher before but always wanted to be, this is your chance. So looking forward to having you be an usher. So please let me know so we can get that started. All right. Any other announcements? Anything that I'm missing? Danny, anything? Awesome. Very good. All right. Then that's all the announcements we have for this morning. I invite you to please rise and share the joy of Christ with those around you.
worship you I can only imagine yeah. I can only imagine What's awesome is when we're able to gather together for worship, we don't have to imagine. We get a little glimpse of what it's like to be in the presence of our God, to be in the presence of the Holy, when we're able to gather outside and lift others up and bless and praise them for being faithful people. We get a glimpse of God's face, of God's love. We've had the opportunity already to do that this morning, and we get to continue to live into that praise and worship together. I can only imagine what heaven's going to be like, but I'm so glad every Sunday to get a glimpse of it with all of you. If you are able, I invite you to please rise and join us in our call to worship. It's in your bulletin. It's also on the screen. We exist because God made us. We are together because the Spirit binds us to each other. Let us worship God, who makes us a community of love and faith. Please remain standing and join us in our opening hymn, which is the Church's One Foundation, hymn number 277. The church is one
Thank you. Please be seated. And I'm going to stop telling you hymn numbers until I have the right hymn numbers up with me. Sorry about that. If you went to 277, you're in the totally wrong hymnal for that one. But anyway, thanks. All right. So it's time for our message with the children. So kids, from wherever you are, if you want to jump in or raise your hands, who are people that are really special in your life? Like if you could think of it, who would be your hero? Who's someone that's been a hero for you in your life? Yeah, Cora, who's your hero? She's thinking. Your mommy, hey, mommies are awesome heroes. That is, that is incredible. That's great. It's good that your mommy is your hero. Who else has a hero? This could be for the older children in the congregation too, you know, the young at heart. Who's your hero? My grandmother. Your grandmother. Excellent. My brother. Your brother. Very cool. That's great. <laughs> and what makes them your hero? What makes them your hero? My grandmother was diabetic, blind, and um, she never complained. She was the sweetest woman there ever was. And because she needed a way to church, I took her. And because of that, I came to visit her. Wow, that's incredible. So through all of that, she helped you in your faith. That's incredible. Heroes are those people in our life. They may not have capes. They may not be able to fly. They might not be able to come and become invisible. They may not be able to shoot lasers out through their eyes, but they are people that have an impact on our lives in tremendous ways. One of my heroes was my grandfather. He had rheumatoid arthritis. He wasn't supposed to be able to walk beyond the age of 21, and he continued to do so. And well into his 80s, he would still get down on his knees every night by his bed and pray. And I have to think that that had to have been excruciating, but it was important to him to be able to have that time in prayer with God. He taught me so much without re really saying anything about faith and devotion. And that was incredible. And I, I owe a debt of gratitude to him for the faith that I have today. Those are people that are living out their faith in special ways that we get to see. So all the kids in the room, young and old, I want you to realize this. The way you live your life, the things that you do, God may use you to be a hero in someone else's life. So it's important to know who your heroes are, but I encourage you to try and be a hero for others too, because we need heroes, right? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all the heroes that you have placed in our life. And we give you thanks for the opportunity to live our life in such a way that we may be a hero for someone else. Not because of us so much, but because of how you live in and through us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. All right. So this is a time in our worship service today where we share our joys and concerns with one another. Um, you get to lift them up before God as well as before your brothers and sisters here in the church and in the congregation. Uh, I want to lift up a huge... Okay, so for Debbie, who's finishing up cancer treatments, and for Jennifer, who is beginning cancer treatments. So please pray for, for both of them. Yeah, Alyssa. For Joy and Sam and Lily, um, Joy's surgery is not coming on the 26th, and it's going to be a major surgery, and just for the yeah. whole family. 
So for Joy, Sam, and Lily, Joy's surgery is going to be on the 26th. We ask for continued prayers for her, but for her family. You know, many of us know that it's not just the person that's going through it that's going through it. You know, the family is there too. Um, prayer for, for God's presence and strength to be with all of them. Others. Yeah, Danny. I'm sorry, Tina. I'll get... Yeah, and what was his name again? Trey. Trey. So Trey passed away almost a year ago now uh, in a car accident. And um, so this is first anniversary, which is always very difficult. Uh, prayers for his family, his friends, and the community uh, for the tragic loss of that. And we know he's at peace and he is with God. Um, but prayers for comfort and peace around his family and his friends. Tina. Okay. Yes. So continued prayers for Pauline Anderson. My understanding is she's doing pretty well and may actually be getting out of rehab soon. Is that what I understood, Larry? Okay. <laughs> or. Oh, okay. And for Tina's mom, who's in rehab and will probably be there until the 27th. So continued prayers for her as well. Others. Yeah, Barry. It's a great bunch of people. It's a lot of fun to be a part of them. But uh, Barry's lifting up praise for our praise team and starting off. Uh, with the prelude that we had, uh, it's, it's great, and it's fun, and it's Christ-focused, and thankful that they allow me and my voice to be a part of it. So, you know, hey, that's pretty cool. So for Angie, who's having medical issues as well as housing issues and everything else, prayers for her and prayers for Jennifer, who's been caring for her mom, um, and it looks like she'll be able to return home, that everything's getting a little bit better. So continued prayers for both of her coworkers. Yeah. Who is it again? Name's Quay. Quay. He's leaving for boot camp. Which service? Okay, that's all right. Um, National Guard, okay. So Quay is getting ready to leave for boot camp, uh, entering into his phase of serving his country, and we're very thankful for that. But uh, whoever's been in boot camp, <laughs> you know what that experience could be like. So prayers for strength and uh, prayers for strong faith in the midst of all that. Are there others? Let us turn to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for being our God. We give you thanks for hearing our prayers. We give you thanks for joining in our celebrations of happy birthdays, of wonderful fellowship events, of um, new communities and friends coming together to help us celebrate our unsung heroes. Lord, we give you thanks for so many things, and we're, we're just so glad that you join us in those times of celebration we're also thankful that you join us in uh, those deep sorrows that we have, those uh, problems that we encounter in our lives where we have loved ones who have passed or we have loved ones and friends that are battling illness and other uh, concerns in their lives. We ask that you be present with those that are battling depression, illness, and other issues. We ask that you be with the less fortunate and help us to find ways of 
bringing resource into their situations, of coming alongside of them and serving them in the way that you would have us serve. Lord, we love you. We are your people. Use us. And now we lift up the prayer that your son taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and glory forever. Amen. Oh, well. All right, I invite the praise team to come up. They're going to be sharing our special music for this morning.
you praise team. It's awesome. So each week we want to say thanks for the offerings and the tithes and the gifts that come into the church. They are such a necessary part of what helps us be the church, do the ministries that God calls us to. So we have many ways of being able to offer. Right now we're not passing plates, but we look forward to soon being able to do that again. Uh, but there are offering plates in the back of the room. Uh, we have also created Tithely, which is an online system for you to be able to give online. If that's easier for you, many people are doing their bill payments online. That's another option for being able to give to the church. There's information uh, for that in the newsletter, in the bulletin, or contact the church office and we can give you information on that. But would you please join me in saying a blessing over the gifts and offerings that have come in. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the, the gifts and offerings and tithes that have come into the church. The financial side of things is such an important part of helping us to function as a church and do the ministries you call us to. Lord, we also wish to lift up to you the people that give of their time and their talents and their gifts in so many ways that are not financial but are so necessary for the, the function of the church, the ministry of the church. We ask your blessing on each and every one. Please bless all these gifts and offerings and multiply them so that it helps us be the church you are calling us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise and join us in the doxology. us in our hymn of preparation, Near to the Heart of God.
Please be seated. Our first scripture today is from Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, you have received their, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. The second reading is from Luke chapter 1, 1 through 4. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the world. Word, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. This is the word of God for the people of God. Morning. morning. Bow with me with, for a word of prayer, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're here this morning to be fed by you, to hear your word preached. Father, we thank you that you've given us so many blessings. Most importantly, the blessing of the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you would teach us today and always, uh, first of all, how to make a good and proper use of prayer and all the means of grace that you have made available to us, that we can grow in the grace of knowledge of you and bear more fruit for your glory to make this kingdom of yours more and more visible to the world around us. Father, we pray that you would also give us assurance this morning that we belong to you and give us a certainty, Lord, that uh, this faith of ours has content and that this faith of yours in this body of content, this word that you've given that you've revealed to us is truthful. And Lord, we thank you that through this word of truth that you've given to us, the Holy Spirit has marked us for salvation, delivered us from our sin and misery, along with the work that you've done through your word and the Holy Spirit. And let us be certain, Lord, that we do belong to you as your children, and that we do belong to you and that nothing can take us from you May we be sure of these things, and may we be sure that uh, we come here to be fed, whether we receive milk as babes or whether we we receive uh, solid meat as mature believers, Lord. Feed us and enable us to grow, that we can be more and more fruitful for the purposes that you have for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's a little crowded up here when we have praise team, huh? So as I mentioned earlier, the focus and theme I wanted to talk about today a little bit was unsung heroes, because unlike Barry, I kind of knew a little bit about what was coming today. So I had an idea to 
focus on that because a big passion of mine within the church is to make disciples for Jesus Christ, to help other people know what it means to come alongside of Christ and serve him in this world. And one of the ways that we do that is by being not necessarily unsung heroes, but humble servants. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. So the definition of an unsung hero is someone that provides a great benefit, has done very good work, has performed some heroic deed or function, but has not received the credit or recognition they deserve. Does that make sense? So someone that is very valuable, has done great things, but isn't necessarily recognized for what they have done. So we'll focus on that a little bit as we go through this, but I wanted to take a look again at our passage from Luke chapter 1. And I love this about Luke because he's, he's a, a humble guy, but a very dedicated person to wanting to tell the story, wanting to get it right. He didn't just write down things that he had heard or whatever, he actually set out to interview people, to talk with eyewitnesses, to talk with people that knew Christ and set an account so that he would have something that he could pass on to others that would be a, a, um, a really good account of what took place with Jesus Christ, something that was real, something that was true, something that was beneficial, something that they could stand on. And who did he write it to? Theophilus. Who can tell me about Theophilus? He's mentioned two times in the Bible. We have it in the beginning of Luke. We also have it in the beginning of the book of Acts. And what does he say about Theophilus? Most excellent Theophilus. Most excellent Theophilus. This is someone that meant quite a bit to the gospel writer of Luke and Acts. It's someone that he knew, someone that he was sharing this information with, someone that was beneficial, that, that would benefit from this. It may have been a disciple of his, a student of his, but it was someone that he dedicated in the very beginning of each of these books. But it's also someone that we know very little about, kind of an unsung hero. What's the rest of his story? What's everything else that he had done? What we do know is that he meant quite a bit to our gospel writer. And that's a pretty cool thing. Even if we don't know him, people at that time knew him. He did something wonderful. He was recognized. He was remembered. But how many other people go through their life doing wonderful things and don't necessarily get recognized? Maybe recognition isn't the point. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. And then we take a look at our Matthew text, which dives into that more from chapter 6. Hear it again. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. God wants you to do the right thing. God wants you to serve in the right way, but serving Him, not serving yourself. When you do things expecting accolades, expecting rewards, expecting parades and honor and claps and everything else, then your service isn't to God. Your service is to yourself, or as he calls it, the hypocrites in the synagogues wanting accolades for the things that they've done putting it out there of all the wonderful things that they have done so they get all the pats on the back and attaboys that they're looking for. It's more about them than it is about doing the right thing. 
Unsung heroes are people who choose to follow this passage from Matthew 6. Rather than brag or highlight their offerings and accomplishments, they instead choose the path of a humble servant, someone who does good works, someone who does good things, someone who is faithful because it's the right thing to do, because it's what God is calling them to, because it is the person that God has made them to be, not because of what they're going to gain from it or get out of it. We are blessed at this church to have many disciples who choose to be humble servants. I think of our tech team in the back who scrounge around every Sunday just to make sure all the electronics are working properly, all the things are plugged in that need to be done, that go through great stress at times on uh, Sunday mornings when things aren't working properly, but they always do a great job of creating wonderful displays and making sure that we have the sound that we need here for a praise team and so many other things. We're thankful for them. We're also thankful for our trustees that go around and they're like the, the little fairies that show up when no one else is here and all of a sudden the light wasn't working when you were there before. Next thing you know, the light is working or patches in the, in the uh, parking lot coming out and doing those things, not for accolades. They're not getting up on Sunday morning and saying, see what we did, aren't we wonderful? No, they're doing it because they care about the church. They care about God, they care about each of you, and they want to make sure that we have all the things that we need to be able to come into the presence of God, but also to be able to serve God. We also have our many food angels in the church. You know, the, the kids got fed yesterday, uh, and it wasn't by anyone coming and looking for accolades or anything else. It was someone who loves cooking and loves feeding people that chose to come and do that. And we're very thankful for them. And there's many other people in the church to do that. I've, I've gotten so many wonderful fruit breads since I got here that are amazing. Uh, but we have some, some people that through cooking, through things that they make food-wise, bless others, and bless ministries in the church in incredible ways. We also have anonymous givers. As some of you know, Joelle and some of the girls got together and started a kind of a, a girls' study group, and they've been looking at the book of Esther, and they're going to be going off to see Esther. It's sight and sound. And the tickets were paid for by an anonymous donor. Um, someone that just loved what they were doing and thought that the, it was a blessing, what God was doing in and through them and wanted to be a part of that blessing. That's amazing. You'll never know who the, that person is. You'll never know who some of these people are, but they're in our midst doing amazing things because God has called them to do that. They don't care if they get accolades. They don't care if they get pats on the back. That's not what they do it for. It's pretty incredible. So I've listed a few. Who, who are some other unsung heroes that you can think of real quick? Anybody know some? Uh, I feel like I'm sung too much. Yeah. <laughs> George Holtzapple. Awesome. Who are some others? Alyssa. And Teresa, Definitely. Others. Carol Blevins. Yeah, absolutely. The many banners and all the different things that she does to make the, the church look beautiful for all the different uh, seasons of the church and everything else. Yeah, Barry. Definitely. So, Darla, one of our unsung heroes as well. We need to be thankful for our unsung heroes. We need to recognize that we do have a church full of humble servants. Not so much unsung heroes, because unsung heroes makes it sound like that person needs recognition that they're not receiving. A humble servant is someone who does it without the need for recognition, but I do think we need to recognize them. I do think that we need to 
lift them up and praise them, not because they need it, but because it's a, it's a good thing to encourage others and to lift other, others up that are doing wonderful things for God. So I encourage you to offer thanks to, all, to everyone in our church that puts service above recognition. I hope for all of us to take on the mantle of being humble servants, doing things because it is the right thing to do, doing the right thing regardless of who is watching or who notices. That's the definition of integrity, doing the right thing whether anyone is watching or noticing at all. That's an important quality and one we all should be taking on as disciples. Doing things out of a sense of God's call for us. Doing it because we hear the Holy Spirit speaking into our lives and encouraging us in a direction of doing service for God, being a humble servant. Well, I always want to respect the humble work done by disciples in our church. I do, I do not want them to go unnoticed or unsung by us in the future to our humble servants, I want you to know, please know that you are seen, your contributions are noticed, and that all you offer and have done matters to us and to God. What you have done and continue to do makes a difference, and for that we thank you. That is how God desires it to work for us in our, in our service and actions as disciples, Think of how often Jesus did, not, did things for people only to tell them to go and tell no one what he had done. It wasn't about the recognition. Now, oftentimes they ran and told anyway, but he told them not to tell what he had done uh, because it wasn't about the recognition. It was for them to notice God's blessing in that situation and in what he was doing. Jesus put God's work ahead of himself. That takes a lot. It means putting our egos in check, and that is not always easy for us. I know I appreciate a good job, an attaboy, a pat on the back, often. And if I'm honest, I feel like sometimes I need that more than I should. Um, what we really need is the desire to know that God is pleased with us and pleased with the things that we're doing. So I have to put my ego in check sometimes, too, and remember that it's not about someone else coming up and saying, hey, good job. It's about knowing that I've done what God has called me to do and praying and hoping that God is pleased in what I have done. For all of us, the goal is to end our journey on this earth and hopefully hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. Beloved, I encourage you, trust in God. Listen for his Holy Spirit in your life. Study, follow, and copy Christ in all you do and in all that you are. Recognize that you are a part of God's bigger plan that includes so many others that are part of his body with you. In this way, you too will be a humble servant a hero that does not need to be sung about. The world needs more people like that, and that is the kind of person I desire to be every day. How about you? Amen. I encourage you to rise, if you are able, and join us in our hymn of sending, He Leadeth Me.
from the beginning, God has led his people. God created everything that we see. God created each and every one of us. And he's not lording it over in such a way that he's on this throne expecting so much to be coming back to him. He's done it for us. We see that through Jesus Christ, who was God coming to sacrifice himself for all of our salvation out of his tremendous love for his creation. He leads us. He sets an example for us. Let's be humble servants like God is. And in that way, the world will be blessed through his love, through his grace, through his amazing power. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Amen.